live from the luxurious pump room at Bath. Oh. Or is it the bathroom at Pump? You, you know what it is. It's, it's live and we're only about less than 20 minutes late this morning. We are again in the parking lot of the luxurious Sprouts Farmer's Market here in uh, uh, beautiful uh, downtown. There's no downtown. There is no downtown I think there is where one. I am. Anyway, we are we are here, and I'm I'm here with Constance. Right, I'm patting her right there obscenely. No, he's not. And I'm going to turn this around, so uh, she'll have a few words. We she's our our resident lunatic. Oh she is a lunatic or is a lunophile or in the bathroom at pump. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this without. Okay. Okay. Good morning, dear. Good morning, dear. As you all know, because I'm sure he told you yesterday that it was full warm moon last night. Worm, worm, you know, worms. I'm so happy they have a moon of all their, of their own. <laughs> anyway, it was a bit hazy and I stepped outside. I didn't get to go for a walk last night. I was busy and uh, in the kitchen. And uh, I, uh, anyway, I stepped outside the front door to take some trash out and I, and I it was dark. And the neighbors have a big tree across the street, which they just had pruned, but it's just starting to bud out. So it's mostly bare branches. And then through, through the most, the budding, mostly bare branches that were black budding, mostly bare branches. <laughs> yes, a black bud, budding black branches. Kate came yes. beautiful, <laughs> bright, although hazy. It was bulbous. It was yeah. hazy as a Japanese print. It was just beautiful. It was awesome. It was awesome. And so I told Lon he had to get off the bed, but he was watching television. He was playing on his phone or something, his computer. Yes. And, yeah. and I'm I sure it had like, nothing to do with work or anything. I'm I don't sure. think it did at that time. Okay. Anyway, uh, and he, I had him come out and see it too, step out on the porch and see it. It was just amazing. It was thrilling. It took your breath away. <laughs> And someone walked by with their dog with their earbuds in and we yell at them to look at the moon. <laughs> because you know people don't Look at the moon, goddammit. <laughs> You're on Earth. You're, There's a right now we have a moon. Be grateful. <laughs> and she had a dog, which is moon thing a moon thing too. So anyway, but uh she was nice. It was not bad. We didn't say goddamn. Uh anyway, so the moon's be anyway, um I don't have anything really to talk about as usual. I I, I I've had a weird month of, of uh, anyway, a couple, it took me a couple of years to plant this little strip of clover beside the house and pull out hundreds of thousands of weeds for two years and and, re, and replant it with white clover that makes beautiful white, it takes over, it makes like a mat and so weeds don't grow in it, but there was still some grass left in there which I don't really want anyway, but it had been very wet the month before so I couldn't, I didn't, you know, anyway, I accidentally left the the side door open gate where the gardeners come through. They're not really gardeners, they're maintenance men who come to mow the front yard. I'm very grateful because I don't care about it. And they mostly mow and blow is all they do anyway. But anyway, I left the gate open and went to Trader Joe's. I came back and it was all destroyed. The clover was They open. mowed your... They, mow they didn't just mow it, they weeded it and they did a terrible job down to the mud almost and it was, it was all over. I probably complained about this before. But then, okay, then I planted irises in the alley because some lady put them out. I went to, it was hard to do that, but there's no place to plant anything really. In the right backyard. by our fence. I mean, yeah. inches from it was our an fence. Inch from the fence. I planted irises in, in California poppies and stuff, and they were coming up nicely. And anyway, the city came by and mowed them. <laughs> and they didn't mow the rich people's plants down, though. At the, the, and they didn't even have to go that close because they didn't go that close to the other neighbor's fence next door. But. Mine day they decided to go that close. Anyway, so then, um, and then I planted, I, I saved seeds from a little tiny patch about uh, three feet by three feet out front by the driveway. 
and I saved seeds from last year and put some new seeds in and they all they were coming up and it rained and I thought oh two days of rain I'll be very happy to go out and look at it the slugs had had eaten all the plants that come up now, I, just, I just had a weird month of now was this the landlady's slugs or was it the city slugs that oh the, the mascot the city the city's mascot are slugs cockroaches and and rats <laughs> but anyway they have three mascots <laughs> You could have snails in that too, but I like snails kind of because they're so romantic. They write love notes on the sidewalk to each other. That's what they're really doing. Uh, yes. Now that you know that. And you can read it in the moonlight because they sparkle. Yes. Go on there, but slugs are different. We try not to let the neighbors see us reading the slug trails at night. <laughs> well, I don't try to read them because they're private. I think it says something about Trump. No, no, well, they only write love notes. Oh, love notes. They write love notes to each other on the sidewalk. <laughs> like skywriting airplanes. Yes. Okay. okay, now you get it. Yes, I All get right. it. All right. So, uh, you know, so I've had a weird kind of, you know, oh, God. And then winter kind of came back. For, I now have, about, I have at least five layers on. Uh, but, you know, it's not horrible, not terribly windy or anything. So I don't have that to complain about. Anyway, I thought I need to change. <laughs> Your attitude. I, no, my attitude, no. I need to change the way I s determined. To, I'm determined to change the way I see things. Just see things. Just determined. And it probably will have to affect Lon, which is going to be the hardest of all. <laughs> Too hard for me, you know, to change how I see him. But anyway, uh, I will probably attempt that for a few seconds every now and then. But uh, everything else. And I, but all I can, my first attempt is not very good. I keep thinking of it. It's, it's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. The earth is kicking you off. <laughs> That's a bad sign. So I thought maybe I'll not think of it that way. <laughs> anyway, I'm determined to see things differently. <laughs> well, good. So uh, uh, good luck. I'm going to we, we wish you all good luck in trying to see things differently this week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, just differently. Uh, uh, many different ways, because, you know, there are, I'm sure there's many different ways you can see everything. But uh, Okay, well, give us... I'm going to put... <laughs> I'm going to let a smile be my umbrella. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> and try to see things differently this week. Do you know what happened this day in, in 922 A.D.? Mansur el Halaj got himself executed. But, you know, in his turban. Yeah, but he wasn't there. They tried to chop his head off, and the turban fell off, and there was nothing but God. There you go. Okay, so that's that. Are you going to get us some... Um, I just got on some of his favorite vegetables at, at the co-op. They actually had some, you know, nice Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yes. We, we, all of our favorite vegetables are <clears throat> fart-producing vegetables. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to. No, I like I, 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 I like yams though. Lon doesn't. Lon's not fond of those. So. But anyway. So, but I do like Brussels sprouts. Uh, batter fried. <laughs> no, we don't. Batter. Deep fat we have fried we have, Brussels. We have never done that. We no. Never done anyway, have a good week and try to change the way you think about things. Oh, well, think about things differently. Maybe, uh, especially for the way you want them to be. That's good advice. You can twist whatever happens into something as a message or something to work the way you want it to be. Yes, I didn't want to have to take care of that anyway. It's too much work. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> something like oh, that. Okay, here I'm going to, no, I almost pressed finish and I was going to press, there I am. There you are. Well, that was, that was the wisdom of the lunatic. <laughs> Mixed message. The mixed me <laughs> Delusion and illusion. She never gives me mixed messages, but 
I always misinterpret the that's message. That's right. So it's all, it doesn't matter what kind of message I give him. He's not joking. Oh. It's a hundred percent of the time. It has always been that way. But anyway, um, okay. Good show, honey. All right. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, I'm going to have a sip of coffee there after that. Uh, yes, uh, to, today's the day um, that is observed uh, coincidentally uh, with the martyrdom of, a, of another religious leader because uh, we celebrate the, the Christian uh, passion of the arrest and trial and and uh, execution and uh, supposed resurrection or resurrection in a certain way anyway of the of the the, the Christian uh, great prophet or whatever however you see him uh, but there was another martyr, and I just mentioned it here, uh, Mansur el Halaj. Uh, and forgive me, I'm not a big expert on his uh, biography or anything else, other than the other than the fact that he was one of the coolest freaking guys on the planet at the moment. Uh, he was. Uh, uh, in ancient Persia or 920, okay, late eight, uh, 800s and up through 922. Uh, but uh, he, was, he was a Sufi, and uh, w which were always sort of uh, viewed as, boy, are they heretics or are they not in the in the world of Islamic uh, uh, religion and culture, uh, in the same way that uh, uh, in other religions, uh, Kabbalists were on the on the verge. Well, are Kabbalists sort of heretical Jews? You know, or, or uh, uh, are uh, the Gnostic sort of heretical uh, uh, Christians? Well, that's how they felt about the uh, the Sufis, uh, especially their uh, uh, focus on uh, the ecstatic union with God, which is a personal, very subjective, very unique and personal experience rather than uh, uh, a religious doctrine that uh, is suitable for uh, crowd control. Uh, now, Mansur el Halaj eventually uh, sort of left the, the formal Su Sufi uh, organization, or at least this is my uh, understanding, and, and became sort of like a freelance, a freelance Sufi. Uh, and he was ecstatic, and he would fall into trances where it's just, he just rode upon waves and waves of love. And he, and he tried to give voice to, voice to, uh, to that. And he did, obviously, uh, uh, by his, uh, his writings and his statements and everything else, he did achieve the consciousness of the singularity of existence. And it felt really good. <laughs> okay. And he, and he tried to, uh, try to, to, to say that. And he would get in and out of trouble because what he said was, uh, 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 bordering on what was considered at the time and and among the more conservative uh, adherents of his uh, of Islam to be heretical in the same way that the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus all the time into into saying uh, uh, 
uh, her heretical things. They did, they laid traps. They asked him, ask him questions that he could only truthfully answer in such a way that it sounded like he was calling the <laughs> calling them assholes. Uh, but uh, uh, Mansur El Halaj got in and out of trouble, got arrested for a while, and uh, the the judge, uh, at least in one case said, yeah, I guess technically he's, that's heresy, what, what he just said. But the guy is so freaking cool. I'm not, he's the coolest guy. He's the, he's the best our religion has. So I'm not going to throw him in jail. And, uh, uh, but a couple of years later, uh, he, he, other people, and here's where Persian politics really, uh, uh, comes in, really wanted him out of the, uh, he was such a loose cannon. And uh, eventually they, they, they did get him. And the, the thing that stuck in their craw the most was his ecstatic declaration that he was the truth. I am truth. Anel Hach. I am truth. We could all say it if we hit that level of consciousness. He says, I am truth and in my turban or in my skull, okay, in my cranium, there is nothing but God. Now, I would wager that most of us listening to my words right now get it and go, God, that's freaking cool. Yeah, I get it. I may not be there myself yet, but I sure want to be at that level of consciousness where that was, that was uh, truth. And it was truth for Mansur El Halaj. And just like uh, the Hiram myth in Freemasonry, where a guy who stuck to his guns gets himself assassinated, and just like Jesus, who stuck to his guns and got himself executed, Mansur El Halaj stuck to his guns and got himself executed on this day, March 26, 922. So he's a guy to look into, okay? Um, because if you've never heard of him, it's an inspiring, an inspiring story. I'm going to, um, uh, what I had planned it to, uh, to do today was uh, uh, share with you my, uh, <laughs> my frustration, uh, if you will. Um, I see if I can find it here on my, yeah. Uh, I've, I've been seen, uh, literally advertised uh, online, uh, individuals uh, saying that they'll curse somebody for you for money. Uh, I mean, it's so outrageous and so out front and so blatantly and so blatant, okay, that it's that it's almost an art form. <laughs> uh, okay, and and I can't I can't uh, uh, I can't in good conscience say that I that I don't get a kick at the audacity 
of of someone that would that would do that. Of of course, I wouldn't suggest anybody, anybody take him or her up uh, up on the on the thing. But I do have to admit that anyone who is naive, gullible, stupid, developmentally disabled enough to go for it. <laughs> to begrudge the guy or the gal <laughs> picking that person's pocket. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it, uh, so that, that's my comment. I'm, I'm not criticizing, I'm not, I'm not uh, wishing them ill or, or uh, hope that they're not successful if they're successful. Uh, at it, I think everybody will probably learn the lesson they need to learn. Which brings me to uh, what I was going to talk about this morning uh, about uh, Goetic evocation and magic like that, uh, whipping up a demon, Solomonic magic, uh, uh, little spells here and there. Uh, whipping up uh, uh, spirits to go do your will or your whim. Uh, and uh, the fact that early on in my, my career, uh, uh, my uh, home life situation, our finances and everything were just so bad. And I was such a young magician that uh, uh, even though I had a very wise teacher, uh, and I was just at the beginning of my magical career, uh, I thought, I'm going to whip up one of the Goetia spirits that should uh, uh, help me out here and, uh, and try to turn my life around. Well, my teacher, of course, uh, Phyllis Seckler at the time, or Phyllis McMurtry at the time, literally, um, uh, cautioned against doing that, said I wasn't ready or any uh, anything else, and 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 she, she said just just try to get the holy guardian angel first, and then then you'll realize you won't need to do that, and uh, you know you know the story, and that was uh, uh, I evoked uh, uh, Aura Boss to turn my life around. And the evocation was just a freaking comedy of errors, okay? And I, I uh, uh, ended up panicking and and uh, frying my eyeballs with uh, oil of abramelin, and and uh, it was just a an industrial accident. And uh, but nevertheless, when I went back into the circle to have my discussion with the spirit. I started to realize exactly what it is that I was dealing with. And what I was dealing with is very, very, very real and very, very personal. So personal that it's personal to a me that I never knew was part of my person. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to make any sense. And I learned so much with that industrial accident mistake. And it was wise for Phyllis to say, don't do it, don't do it, me. you know, you'll, you may burn your eyes or something like that. She didn't say that, but the, that's the point. It's going to be painful. Uh, you're going to burn your eyes. It's dangerous. Yeah. But I learned so much when that operation blew up in my face. I learned so much about what it was and who I am by that, by that uh, particular singular magical operation. And I can't imagine whipping up a spirit for anyone else to, to, to destroy their enemies. Okay. 
I can't imagine the web that one would fall into by enmeshing one's own karmic web with someone else's to such a degree that you would trigger that blowing up thing for somebody else's will and then charging money for it. So one of two things is happening. Either they're not they're not doing it at that level and it's just a pocket picking pocket picking thing or it is actually really real and everybody <laughs> is getting themselves enmeshed in a in a uh, the reaction to that and it's not up to me or anyone else to say that's either good or bad for anybody so here's what I have to say uh, uh, when I tried to to uh, uh, conjure a spirit for somebody else's uh, benefit which only indirectly was for my benefit too it, it blew up in my face I'm not going to read the, the whole thing just the opening to it um, but you can read the whole thing it's called uh, the curse of Belial never share a fiend with a friend and it's from my book uh, uh, my life with spirits Alistair Crowley wrote the supreme single supreme ritual is the attainment of the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, just what Phyllis told me. It is the raising of the complete man in a vertical straight line. Any deviation from this line tends to become black magic. Any other operation is black magic. If the magician needs to perform any other operation than this, it is only lawful insofar as it is a necessary preliminary to that one great work or that one work. The Western magical tradition teaches there are 10 major landmarks in the initiate's journey. These, of course, aren't geographic landmarks. Rather, they are 10 progressively higher levels of consciousness. Students of Eastern mysticism are quick to point out that at least seven of these landmarks of consciousness correspond nicely with the seven chakras or psychic centers in the human body. Either way you look at it, attainment to the next level endows the initiate with a greater insight, wisdom, and power. When Crowley wrote about the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, he was referring specifically to achieving and maintaining that level of consciousness corresponding to the sixth sephira on the tree of life. In Eastern terms, this coincides with uh, the activation opening uh, uh, of the Anahata chakra or the, the heart chakra, and it's often called the Christ center in the human psychic body. Until the initiate has achieved this level of consciousness, he or she is more or less blind to the true nature of his or her spiritual condition and therefore ill-equipped to make competent magical decisions. The only acts of magic that are lawful decisions, excuse me, the only acts of magic that are lawful before this grade is achieved are those designed to break down the obstacles that prevent the magician's magical progress toward that goal. More often than not, the new magician doesn't have a clue as to what those obstacles really are. 
Consequently, magical workings at this stage of one's career are a hit-and-miss affair. Oh, brother, they're a hit-and-miss affair. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, in order to learn enough to be someone that can do that, sometimes it's necessary to do quite a few hit and misses to train yourself to know what's right and what isn't for you. But I digress from Ducat here. Okay. And often meet with less than roaring success. So high is the failure rate that many magical instructors forbid their students from dabbling in anything other than the invocation of the Holy Guardian Angel. This, I feel, is a mistake. Unless a few things blow up in your face, you'll never learn what you'll need to do and who you will need to become to avoid such mistakes in the future. It's true that if I had listened to Phyllis before I uh, evoked Ouroboros for the first time, I could have spared myself the agonizing pain of burning my eyes with cinnamon oil. On the other hand, I would have missed the opportunity to learn a score of valuable magical lessons. I would have denied myself the priceless, ego-shattering experience. I might never have become aware of the various parts of my soul. I might have remained completely ignorant of the nature of the spirits. Not to mention the possibility that Mad Bob, the guy that came in <laughs> immediately after the evocation and gave me a car, had not shown up with the car so dramatically that so dramatically rescued my family from destruction. So I'm going to read that again. I might have remained completely ignorant of the nature of the spirits, not to mention the possibility that Mad Bob might not have shown up with the car that so dramatically rescued my family from destruction. I was very lucky with that first evocation. The reason I believe that everything worked out was because it was my unambiguous will to pull my life together. I wasn't experimenting. I wasn't praying. I was actually doing something. Doing something for myself. I think it could have been anything sacrificed a cigar and a bottle of rum, performed an unnatural act with a cheese grater, anything would have worked. On the other hand, if the object of the operation is not one's unambiguous will, or if your will is divided against itself for one reason or another, the energy you pour into the magic it just seems to make things worse. A most dramatic example of such a breach in formula occurred when I tried to share a demon with a friend for the purpose of prospering a business venture. And then I go on and tell that tale. That is chapter number 24 from My Life of the Spirits. And that's where I'm going to leave it today. And I'm going to leave you with uh, uh, just a suggestion to try to understand the difference between what we commonly think is self-sacrifice. Giving yourself up for something. Oh, I'm going to sacrifice this. Maybe I'll get rewarded for the sacrifices. 
there's a difference between the common idea of what self-sacrifice is and the cosmically profound idea of the self-sacrifice of, of, of uh, uh, an enlightened individual such as Mansur El Halaj, who I, for, I forgot to mention, he, uh, uh, he lost his egos, <laughs> or he was so egoless, okay, uh, that uh, a couple of years before he was actually executed, he said, I understand if you guys want to want to want to kill me. Doesn't that's not me. You won't be killing me. So I'll give you permission. OK, I I give you permission to kill me. OK, my blood will not be on your Islamic hands. OK. Well, <laughs> They took him up on it. Okay, eventually they took him up on it. But how can you kill? I am truth. How can you kill? I am truth. And in my turban is wrapped nothing but God. And El Hawk. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and your will.